What is up guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to play Yone. And as something new, I will now be including one or two more games in each video depending on how much time I have. So the build has changed since the last time I made this video, so it is time for an update. So Yone, you have the Q, that is your low cooldown ranged ability. And what's important to know about this ability is the fact that if you hit a minion before hitting the enemy champ, then you'll not take aggro. And that's really crucial because that's how you want to be poking early on. Because if you just hit them directly without hitting a minion, you will take um, minion aggro. But it's a scaling champ. He's sort of a melee hyper carry, uh, but he starts spiking really hard when you get two items. And passive working similar to the Yasuo in that you get higher crit chance from items and you also deal a lot of magic damage uh, so that's a good thing here because even if people build armor against you you don't get countered as hard as Yasuo even though he does have the armor pin on the ult you're still a bit safe uh, from armor compared to a lot of other champs we saw the Amum around here. So the E guys, you go into this spirit form and then when you damage people, um, you're going to store some of the damage and then when you recast your E, you're going to deal some of that damage once again. So a lot of your damage is within this E guys. So of course, when you want to go all in and stop. Oh, it's a good thing I eat out instantly. Then you make sure that you are, uh, you know, timing this ability right. And also, when you're eing out, it makes you unstoppable, so you can use that to cancel out a lot of incoming CC. I could die. Uh, if I have my W, I can probably bait him in. I've been tanking a lot of unnecessary harm. Okay, he's dead. Just had to E out. Just to make sure I did not take too much damage. But, so you can use this E ability to like, you know, buy yourself time and something, but never try to use it to escape with, because you cannot. It is always going to drag you back to the initial E position. So it's not an ability that should be used to uh, dodge stuff with. I'm just gonna get an additional dagger. And the ignite is out on the Talon. And also your W, uh, also dealing a lot of magic damage, your Q and your W scales off of attack speed. And with scaling, I mean the cooldown. So more attack speed you have, the lower cooldown it's going to be. Down to a cap. And your W dealing damage based on maximum health as well. So start dealing a lot more damage later on in the game, um, especially against tanks like the MMO, for example. It's actually been... A couple months since I played this champ. Right, that's a good trade right here. See, I used the shield from the W to trade with. It does have a pretty high cooldown. That's so not something you want to be spamming. But try to save it for the trades if you can. Because it doesn't help that much when it comes to just poking alone. Since it scales off of maximum health. So it doesn't deal that much damage early on. But the shield is really nice to have. Trying to get out before he gets to proc the passive. So we're going for these short trades. It is a champ that wants to go for more extended ones. He can definitely also go for the bursty traits. But people is crit. So that means that he is DPS oriented. But at the same time, he's also pretty similar to an assassin. So he has a mixed playstyle. Now we have the ultimate, so it's another ability that can make you unstoppable, but it does not work quite the same way as your second part of the E. So now, um, when you want to get an easier hit with the ultimate, you want to try to time it with your um, stack Q. And with the stack Q, I mean the knockout part of it. And remember, it makes you dash forward, so don't just 
dash into the opponent if he's going to like destroy you in fights. So if we can keep the talent here, that'd be nice. I just stay out of range here trying to poke. And I'm just gonna keep pushing here so if he decides to recall then he's going to lose something. And we have really low cooldown on that Q so the way clear is really good on this champ. The only thing here is that you have to be within close range in order to way clear. But that can make things difficult. If you're playing as a range champ or something but we'll just back off here. And remember this can also be used as mobility but if an enemy champion Body blocks it, you're going to stop right behind them. So that's something worth keeping in mind. So now the difference here is that you're going for Krang's there. It's been a while, but of course it's no longer a mythic item. And it still gives you a lot of damage. That bonus damage you're getting, so that's awesome to have. And then after that you're going for the Infinity Edge for a massive, massive damage spike. Uh, missing mid lane. There he is. He does have... So, Yone loses early game to a lot of champs uh, because he wants to get a couple items before he gets rolling. That's a good trade. You can see it starts becoming a lot better um, and a lot smoother when you get some attack speed because then the cooldown on your Q a lot lower and you can you know afford to trade way better if you want to like get a pretty easy hit with the ultimate try to time it with a stack Q so knock the opponent up first and then use your ults in this case we don't have to do it it would be overkill but when you're trading with your name also the stack Q does a lot for you so you try to stack up the Q on the minions and then you hit the knock up on the enemy champ and then you keep trading. But the moment they come down and if they're able to trade better than you, then you just go for short trade. You knock them up, go for short trade with a couple of order attacks and a W and Q and then you E out. And remember, when you're recasting that E, it makes you unstoppable on the way back. And it's really crucial to know because you can use that to cancel out a lot of CC. For example, uh, the Amumu ultimate, his stuns, uh, Stillian slows, his stuns, and so on. It's like a free get out of jail card, if you use it right, that is. And it's only on the way back. So you cannot recast that E if you already got CC'd. You would have to time it, probably. And now you can start trading a lot better. You see, if the assassins and fail the combo against the Yone, uh, since you have way higher DPS, then you're going to auto win the trade. I go for the Sylvan here. Okay. okay, there we go. You see the range you're getting. So inside your E, you can use that first part of your E to like dash over thin walls. And then of course you can also flash and use everything else uh, during that time. But remember, it's always going to drag you straight back. Of course with a red buff, since your Q also procs on hit, it's also going to proc the red. Now we can just go ahead and back off and get the Kranks there. And of course I'm going to make like one or two more games in each video. Including this one and um... Those are mainly going to be commentaries. So I don't like explain the basic stuff. It's only the first video that's going to be the basics and then the rest will be... Educational commentaries. And it's also to show you different matchups because sometimes... You might get a very easy matchup or sometimes you just snowball out of control in the first game. So if I show a bit more games, then you might get something better. I just see the DPS you get 
the moment you have the Kraken Slayer. And with a lethal tempo, of course, the attack speed also working with your Q and the W when it comes to reducing the cooldown. It's insane. Because it will get to very low cooldowns. Even though there is a cap to it, it will get very low. I'm almost down here. Him now. And he's going tank, so we don't have to worry that much about his damage. Oh no, okay. Bottling light. Same thing, stack the Q on the minions, and then you go in with your E. That's fine, we got the ignite out. We can't quite afford the B of Sword yet, so I think I'll just be staying here, even though it is pretty risky. Um, in the meantime, you can actually go look for the fruits. Since I don't see a Momo on the map, I'm just going to chill out for a bit. I want to stack the Q on the minions. And then we can try to look for an engage. And if it fails, you can always E out. We don't want to be tanking the second part of his... W. I'm going to back off for a bit since I don't see a Momo still. We can use the Udyr to get some vision, so there are no fruit spot side, as far as I can tell. Same thing again, gonna stack the Q up on the minions, and then we try to engage by... ...with the E. Man, that guy really wanted to get that shot down. You see, that's why I use the ultimate. So it also has a CC component to it, but it's very, very good for stacking up the opponent. So if you can hit multiple people at once, stack them up. Then maybe you have your Q stacked already, then you can actually apply a lot of CC. That's your name. Let's get a control ward here. So we almost have enough gold for the Infiniate, and that's going to be a massive, massive spike. You can see we already have almost 90% crit chance, that's because of the multiplier on your passive. And you don't have to worry about getting too much crit. Because when you exceed 100%, additional crit beyond that is going to be converted into bonus AD. So you can get as much crit as you want. And you see, now he just becomes sort of an assassin. Even though he has insane DPS. And because you're dealing mixed damage, of course still mostly physical damage, but since you're dealing mixed damage, it's very hard to counter him, because they'll be needing to buy both armor and magic resistance items. And you can use the Q to dash over walls like this here, guys. That does give you some mobility, even though what he lacks is free mobility. Because his C doesn't really count, since he drags him back, and his Q needs to be stacked first. And when you're running away, you don't always have the opportunity to stack it up, so that doesn't count either. So the only real thing you have is your ultimate. And even the ultimate can get body blocked. Has to E out in case he tries to ult. Missed the ult, unfortunately, but you can see it's pretty easy to dodge. Like, the ultimate is really, really easy to dodge. Because it's so slow and so telegraphed, so... Most of the time you want to be using it when the opponent is CC'd, or using it out of vision when they cannot see you to catch them off guard. Gonna take the fruits and then we go split pushing on the bot side. He's sort of a hyper carry in melee form and a very very strong split pusher, so you can go to silence if you are confident in the matchup and on the champ as well. We'll just push out the bot side. Gonna stack this up. Ooh, okay. 
flashing out. We don't see Cillian, so he could also be here. Actually, I could have taken down both of them if I played right. I trolled a bit. Okay, there's Cecilian. I was expecting the ultimate to hit, but it just slightly missed. But you can go for a lot of plays on this jam, guys. And that W shield, you can see it actually saved me uh, from getting toasted. So, pretty important that you see probably. Ultimate down on the Estrel. We see Cilia mid, so we can just afford to push this out. Alright, and we can back off. I'm not gonna base here because I don't see them anymore, so they could be coming down. I'm just gonna walk back a bit. Close down. Cilian going down too, looks like it. Alright, and now the Infindiad. So now we are sitting on that huge, huge spike. Now you have a couple options. So you can go for the Bloodthirster here, and you can also go for the Hallbreaker. I'm gonna go for the Bloodthirster this time around. I think I'm gonna get the uh, Lifesteal, since I don't have anything. And then we just go back to split pushing. Hullbreaker is also insane to have guys, if you want to be split pushing most of the time. But if you know that you'll be forced to group or something, then don't buy it, because it will be a waste of gold. But for a split pusher that is isolated most of the game, it's really strong. So that decision is up to you to make, whether you want to get it or not. And also don't just use your E immediately guys. I like to wait a little bit, so I try to get within melee range. I try to hit them with the Qs to stack it up. Once they use their movement ability trying to escape, then I use the E. Uh, because inside that E you get ghosted and you also get some bonus movement speed. So it can help you to chase. But at the same time it can also mess you up. Just because it will drag you straight back. After a short amount of time. So we have the Herald coming in. I'll just stay then. Right. And the ultimate is very risky to use. Oh, exhaust and... Stopwatch. Was it Sonya's? Why is the stopwatch? Oh, you see. Heavy, heavy DPS oriented while also having the... Uh, Hit off an assassin, sort of. So that's what makes him so so fun to play is that he has multiple different playstyles. If you like playing a you know sort of AD carry, with also a bit of assassin built into it, then Yone is going to be a really really good option. Just take away the jungle camps whenever you can. And remember you can use the Q to get all these walls here. The Q has a bigger range than the first part of your E when it comes to dashing all walls. So the Q can for example be used, you know, over here and such. The E also works over here. You have to make sure that you're standing super close. So walk all the way up here and then you can use the E. Not gonna go in here. I'm sitting on 1k gold. Whoever gets to take me down, I'm gonna take this wave and then I'll back off and get the blood tester. At this point, you actually do have enough damage, so survivability becomes more important. So you get this, and then you can get something like Guardian Angel, Distance, MR, or whatever you need. Have this. I'll probably go for the Guardian Angel here, but I can't really afford the BF Sword, so I'll just go for this instead. The stance is really great for anti-burst, and unlike the Guardian Angel, it does not have a cooldown to the passive. Guardian Angel procs once, and then it goes on 300 second cooldown. But at the same time, Guardian Angel can be really insane, especially when you're sitting on such a massive bounty. 
Ooh, a couple shutdowns coming in. Kaden also going down, or no? I can save her, I think. I just take him instead. But man, he is so tanky. It's very tanky. Why oh, didn't I hit the Q? How did I miss the Q? Just using that W shield to block from that tower damage. More of the players have respawned. But he's not tanky enough since he only has armor and also deal a lot of magic damage and maximum health damage. So the ultimate is up soon. Ideally, you want to have a comp that actually works for your name, so you have somebody who can engage and group people up for your ults. But that was the first game. Of course, I'll be having more in this video. Alright, we are back for game 2 and now we are playing against Akali, so AP matchup and this is also known to be very difficult for Yone because he's an assassin and he struggles a lot against assassins. Similar to Talon in the previous matchup but that one is a lot easier than Akali because uh, she can perma poke you and she has that shroud that you absolutely can't do anything about. And if you make a mistake after level 6, then she just all ins and you are toast. You have to be very careful in this matchup. And I'm going to show you how to play it so it becomes a bit easier. So they also have Volibear top lane. Oh, support? Wukong jungle is also pretty annoying to deal with. So, kind of have to hope that I get fed somehow, so I can snowball out of control. The first thing here, the Q range. You want to walk in and out of the Q range. So you try to bait it out, because early on it uses up a lot of energy as you can see. You do that, um, it's going to reduce a lot of the trading potential onto you. Now we can all in actually. Of course I missed the Q. So you have to look at her energy, and if it gets low, she won't have enough to use that Q, and then you can trade back pretty easily. You see, I just walk in and out of that Q range, trying to bait it out, and then you can go in and trade. But still, it's a matchup where you want to be outscaling. You should not expect to win early on. Sometimes you will. You might become lucky or something, or get a gank, or whatever, but most of the time, it's a matchup where you're looking to outscale. So basically, surviving. It's fine, as long as we can get those short trades off. She does have the Doran shield. It's mainly after level 6 where it starts becoming way more difficult. Oh no, top lane is done so. Is he close? I no idea, but he had to blind pick so that's something. Right, we got the W out, so that's also something you want to take out after level 3. Really important to bait that out as well, because otherwise you cannot trade back. Your Q can still hit in the shroud, but when you cannot see her, she can just maneuver around. And all that stuff, so... Take that out, and also remember, when you're going to dash forward with your Q, she's going to use her uh, E back, and then re-engage. Shroud. Okay, I hit her, so I could afford to use the W to get another hit off. Take this one, I'm going to all in. And she won't, because she knows. And I can help the jungler if... Wukong is trying to contest. Oh, double kill. On the tank. Okay, not bad. Looks like I had to move.
We just dash out. She might flash. Oh, she's not. Okay, that's fine. Darius died again. The problem is that we don't have a lot of AP. We only have Vilkos, and if he falls behind, they start stacking full armor. And that's why it starts to become difficult. Even though you deal a decent amount of magic damage, most of the damage is still physical. We got the kill on the Wukong, and then we pieced out. Because we could take the fight, but then Molly Bear got the kill on the Darius, and this guy is super far behind. Oh my days, that's not very fun. I don't know what the Zoe is doing. They might get the kill still. That's so sad. That's a Tilter. Missing. Okay, they're winning, but that's great to see. So we need all the kills onto the Velkos if we can. So if they start stacking a lot of armor, he can still do something. Okay. Zoe mid. Zoe just roaming around the map. She does not have boots yet, but I'm gonna ward around here. Because she could be camping and trying to land a bubble from this side. And if I get ganked by the Wukong as well, then... I'm toast. The, this might mean that she's still here. Yeah, there she is. I don't have anything up. Oh no. Luckily she's not level 6. Otherwise that would have hurt pretty much. Rip cannon. Are they chasing? Just got level 6. Hit the Akali. Oh my god I got hit by the bubble. What? How do I get hit by the bubble? I hit the Akali with the ultimate because you could um, you can hear the sound and you can also see the uh, animation. There's the Wukong. If we can keep him out. The Wukong is also really annoying to deal with. For most gems, but also your name. Because he can chase you pretty easily. Right, he's not leaving yet. I had to watch out. Okay, Kali's still 6, so now is when you have to be really, really careful because she can actually all in you at, a, at any time. Which is why you have to be really careful that you don't just queue forward. If you do that, then rip. Oh my god. Oh my god, I missed the Q. If that Q hits, you would have died as well. But you see, they just all in uh, as soon as they get level 6 and you are gone, bro. But still, I missed that one out because if I hit that Q, she would have died. Because it will give the tower uh, more time to get another shot off before she flashed. That's unlucky, but it is what it is. Oh, this guy's behind 48 CS. But at least her uh, ultimate and ignite is down, so that's gonna give us some time. If I was playing against multiple AP, for example, they also had AP jungle, then I would go for Witsend. Oh my god. Nice, and that's a shutdown too. The fear. Okay, nice, I got the kill. I missed the Q, but I got the kill still. That's perfect, because I need the kills here to snowball. But see, if you manage to land that stack Q onto a target, it's way, way easier to land your ultimate as well. I'm gonna push. And Vilkos is getting fed, so that's perfect. I'm gonna push here to apply pressure on the Wukong. That makes it harder for him to try to contest the Drake.
And of course your E can also completely nullify the Zoe bubble. So that's why Yone works as a great counter pick against the Zoe, for example. Well, that's going to be very difficult with the Volibear top side. That's why we have to rush and snowball out of control as fast as possible. And I'm not buying the cloak, even though you get additional benefits with the more crit because of your passive. I don't want to rely on the RNG and this also gives you attack speed so that's really good for your Q and your W and your auto attacks in general. Your has been destroyed. If he starts getting hold break or something then wow it's going to be so hot. But the main thing about Akali do not overextend after level 6. Um, uh, you saw what happened when I did. And um, Walk in and out of your Q range to bait it out. Look at the energy bar, and when she used too much, that's when you can go in for those short trades. I want to poke it down. Oh no, he cannot die. I think Nocturne should ult or rip. He should just stay with the bot side, I think. But now we are fine, but I think Wukong could be coming from the top side. You see how annoying the shard is? There he is. As I thought. There we go. That's what we wanted. You can trade back, like if you know how to kite with your Q range, you can trade back when the opponents are engaging and then when they cannot engage anymore because for example of the tower, then you start trading back and that is what allows you to go for these plays. I faked the juke backwards, so she used the bubble on that side and then I just went the normal way ahead. Oh, she's gonna ignite me. Come on, bro. Okay, she did not get within range, I think. Bro, I'm missing those crucial cues. It is a skill shot that happens, but still... Why is he pushing that far up? I don't understand. And he left. I could kind of tell it was that type of player uh, based on how he was just typing in uh, Champion Select. That's pretty typical, but I told you guys I would also be including losses in the videos, so it doesn't matter. Um, I'm not only going to show wins. Even if I lose, then I also show it as long as it's a decent game. So we'll see how long we can stall this. Let's see what we can do. I have to get so fat that I can 1 versus 3, but it's never going to happen against the Volibear specifically because he's so strong. And he has armor too. And he's 1 versus 2 ing our teammates under the tower. Unless he destroys all of us at this point. We need some anti healing so he doesn't perma heal with his W. Just insta left. Yikes. Got solo killed by the Caitlyn and then he pieced out. Typical. Oh, if they get the kill? Oh, that's nice. I could stay for the Caitlyn. But oh, they got a nice shot down, so that's awesome. Maybe this means that we can go for the Drake since um, Wukong is topside. Probably have to sacrifice. Our bot side. Oh, bro, you should go for the uh, Drake, no? They had the Herald too. I did not see that. I did not see that. Maybe I can stop it before it gets to a. Uh... Oh, 
But still, we are losing towers and such on the map. He has all up soon, he can take out the Caitlyn. But now we won't get the Drakes, because I had to go top. Wait, you don't have E up? Late. Messed up the combo. Messed up the combo big time, bro. Let's see if we can do something. I stacking up the Q a bit too early on here, so that's the problem. I'm just eating out instantly, you see? So I don't get hit by the Wally Bear uh, CC and then chain CC it. I just took out the Soviet and then peaced out. So Vilka steals a lot of damage to the Volibear because he's full armor at the moment. And if Nocturne plays it right, he can take out the Kaelin with every single um, alt engage when she's alone. So we try to do the best we can, um, even though it's 4 versus 5. I think I'll take the ripoff. And Volibear is just gonna destroy anybody who walks within range. And he also smart enough to build the Frozen Heart because it's such a big counter to um, attack speed reliant champs. Like the Yone. I hope he's going for Lion Race. Okay, he did get it. That especially is so important. can get the infinite. I don't think it's enough still since it's Volibear. I'm telling him to ult the Caitlyn. He should just be doing that off cooldown so she becomes afraid of split pushing. If he hovers around here he can alter the moment she uh, gets in vision. As long as she's alone that is. He could still be around so I have to check. Taking with your E can be really smart. Because if you get caught out, you can always see out. As long as you're not too slow, that is. Do not fight. They just have to hold. See the Zoe? Who's getting altered? They altered the Zoe? It's fine. Like, if they can hold, that's fine. So now is why it becomes annoying, since we are 5 versus 4, one person just AFK split pushing right and it's so hard to match it. That's a good bot. That's a good bot and then I had to um, push this out for a bit. I think I should be able to chase her. Right now, I have to keep pushing. And uh, we need to take out the tower. Because if Volibear gets here, it's going to be hard. He heals for a lot. Like, he heals for a ton. But, like, he's very strong in extended fights. So, oh, he's dead. And he survives? 1 HP. It's actually huge. So, I'm gonna E in front, I think. Oh man, one auto attack. Just one auto attack, but it it expired. That's a back off here. And I think I just keep pushing the bot side. We don't even have the first drag. I actually thought we got it. Just remembering wrong, Satch. There's more damage. And if it turns out that they just become incredibly tanky. I'm also gonna get armor pin. But oh, he should have waited. Oh my god. Even stopwatch? What? I'm ahead XP wise. Oh, 
Oh, finally. You see, even that was so close, man. I'm sitting on 11 kills. 11 kills. And that was so close. And only one because I ignited, so he didn't heal as much. So you can see, like... Yone can struggle a lot against these types of champs. We have to take this. Like, we have no choice. If you don't take this, it's going to be very stressful when the other Drake comes in. Now that Volibear's dead, we have to take it. Like, he's gonna CP, I, may, I imagine. So we have to pull it out. Pull it out, because Wukong is gonna hide in the bush. Now I'm out of the fight. This is so bad. Really unlucky with the... Uh, that he had his TP up. Now they're gonna take the Baron, I think. Yeah, they can probably end with the Baron. Yeah, she stopped the recall, so they're going for it. So I can't really contest. So I'm just gonna go mid and try to uh, defend the tower. Gonna ignore the ripoff. Ooh, I hit all the Qs. Sometimes you can turn out to be lucky. Wait, are they not doing the Baron? I skid him bot side. Might be doing it, but it's pretty slow then without the Kate. Oh, I'm so dead. Oh my god, I am so dead. That's a lot of healing. And it's so disgusting that I have a 1k shot down when you're playing 4 versus 5. Like that's honestly so disgusting. They have 3 drakes, they got the Baron and I'm still sitting on 1k shot down. Like what? Like makes no sense. I tried to like take the Baron buff off of the Wally Bear. That would have been so nice because he's gonna go split pushing now, I think. And without anti-healing, it's so hard to stop him. The way I fought him earlier is that I did not go all in, I poked him a bit, kited a little bit, and then I went in. So we just had to try to defend as good as we can. Almost double CS of the Akali. Since we have pretty good farm, so that's something, but we don't want to fight here. Their teammates could be on the side. Oh, don't go in, bro. You don't see people on the map. Yeah, I had a feeling they were here. Gonna ignite him. But oh yes, not enough, sadly. Wait, why is uh, Nocturne topside? Oh, what is this guy doing? Wait, what? Yeah, Vilkos trying to flank by himself? Ah, uh, question mark? But I also trolled. I also trolled for sure. I greeted a bit too much. It's also bad because I knew they were coming. Should be able to defend the tower though. Okay, it's not completely over yet. Not completely done so. Still got a chance to uh, make things work. But even though we're most likely not going to win this game, it's still like interesting to see how you defend with this champ and how you play from behind. You know I'm really fed right now, 4 versus 5. Right, so it doesn't really do much.
There are like some smart plays you can do when you're behind and such. I'm not gonna use my E here. Oh. Oh, they could have killed her. I just out, that's good. Alright, like this. I think I killed her a bit too early on. Yeah, we had to poke like this. I'm gonna go for the Caitlyn. Yeah. That's all I could do, but they can probably end now, since uh, we uh, got caught out. So that's unfortunate, but you see the target selection. Um, I was dead anyway, so I tried to find somebody I could take out. I saw the Caitlyn, and then I got her down. Oh, that's such a nice Q. They're gonna get the soul now. Which blows big time, because it's the one that heals and definitely need anti-healing. Look at that armor coming in. Is that a random soulman coming in? Iron spells. Yeah, I think it is. This one is also really OP against your name. Don't need anti-healing. And what did they uh, do to this item? So it also gives armor pen. That's good, I guess. I have the soul, so they heal even more now. So like, if you don't have anti-healing, then good luck. I'm pretty much a glass cannon at this point, since I cannot afford to get defensive items. We'll see what we can do, man. Um, they're probably gonna group, I assume. Because then they can just end a lot easier. If we can get the Caitlyn, that would help us out a lot. That's good. Had to stall. Most of them almost caught up in XP to me. I have to walk back a bit here, so if I get flanked from this side, I have to ult over here. Little bit of free damage. But he's gonna heal up anyway, so that's a disaster. Okay. So Velkos can defend bot, I hope. I'll stop him guys. Fight him, stop him. Bro, what is that champ, man? So disgusting, man. Yeah, it's, it's so disgusting. And we don't have anti-healing, so that's the problem. Look at how much he's healing. He also has the soul, so... Yeah. I don't think there was much we could do here. Maybe if we coordinate a bit better, so we don't give him free W procs. Now I have the anti healing and the armor pen. If I had this, we could have taken him down like super easily. But for now, that is not happening. I just have to let it go and uh, defend. Don't go for it. Like, Akali is just gonna take him down. There's no way he can do anything against the Akali. Not enough to stop me. A broken heart, an anxious mind. Does Caitlyn have? Still nothing defensive, so like every Nocturne ult should be a kill if she's alone. So that is going to be his job. When we and she starts grouping up, then yes, there's certainly going to be 
way more difficult to make anything happen. Okay, she flashed out. Oh my god, even flash out? Yeah, that's my bad. I got caught. I got caught. I think it was pretty much over anyway, since they have the soul and the Baron buff. Oh, that's a nice ult. And here comes the big boy. Oh, she's gonna die too. Oh, no, mind. She got heal. <laughs> well, how lucky is that? Oh, he got Velcro's heal. Okay, well, GG's. That's how you can try to play from behind. This was Doom, but I'm still going to show, you know, losing games. But that was it for how to play Yone. Hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching and see y'all next time.